Jared Brown, the new soccer coach at Northside High School. I say new because you'll be new for the women's season. Your first season as head coach of soccer was in the fall. And you actually had a pretty decent season with the young men at Northside. Yeah, we um, first time in uh, school history that we made the playoffs. So uh, as well as the best record in school history uh, with nine wins. So um, for my first year, I have no complaints. We definitely um, did where we want to to build a program up and got a good start off last year with that. Now your playoff game, you kind of drew a trip, and it, it wasn't uh, wasn't an easy one. Like a couple hours on the road before you were able to hit. Yeah, it was games. about a two-hour drive up to North Johnston, and uh, that was a solid team. So we went up there and just started a little bit slow, got behind. Uh, a couple goals early on uh, right off the bat and take the first few minutes out of that game probably 10 15 minutes or so and the rest of the game was real even wish we could have had that back uh, to play again because it was a good game from that point on just got off to that slow start now as far as your soccer squad I, obviously you're in competition with other fall sports but uh, how many of your young men do you expect to come back next year we have a lot coming back. We have a solid core. We had five seniors who all started for us, but we have a solid probably 14 or 15 guys that got a lot of minutes. Uh, some of them, we had injuries that they you know, were thrown right in there. Um, so we still have a good group coming back, uh, a lot of talent there. Now you uh, had had the pleasure of having uh, the best record so far in Northside history at 9-12-1. and one. In addition, you had some signature wins during the season. I, I believe Crowden was one of the teams yes. that, that was a signature win. Yes, Crowden as well as White Oak. We took both of them, um, which White Oak was huge early on in the season, kind of got some momentum going for us in that in the non-conference. And then uh, Crowden was early on in the conference uh, schedule, so that helped a lot as well. Now, we're heading into women's season. I know that practices actually start uh, for all the spring sports on Monday. Have you had your tryouts and everything? We'll have tryouts on Monday. Right now, we've had uh, workouts um, a couple days a week, and uh, we're getting some good numbers showing up, um, but nothing like tryouts, nothing like that first day, so just excited for Monday. Uh, can't wait for that to come in, so can really get a good feel for what we have coming out this year. And uh, you, you've gotten a look at in workouts. Uh, do you know how many returning players will be coming to the tryouts? Um, I believe we do lose quite a few players, so I'm hoping for around seven or eight at least returners. But it's that's the one kind of funny thing about taking a team over. You just don't know. Um, you don't know until that day, so I'm waiting for Monday. Now, the women's team's been a little bit different because they were under different coaches. So I think this is the first time we'll have the same coach for the men's and women's teams. Um, yes, uh, I think maybe the last year they were, but um, okay. with Coach Akers. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, with Coach but, Akers, they were. Uh, before that, they had Coach Cobb, and they actually mm -hmm. had, had some winning seasons with Coach Cobb at 9 and 8. And, Four and twelve and eight and one, but uh, you're you're taking over a team that is since Coach Cobb it started to be in a kind of a rebuilding phase. So, what are some of the things you're looking forward to this soccer season for the young women? Well, uh, I think we've got some solid returners coming back, so hopefully they can set the foundation for everything. Um, but kind of just like the men, just building that program, building it up. Uh, because they didn't have a lot of wins last year, just like the boys, they didn't have a lot. So now uh, it's about improving on that and improving just from the start, whether it be basic skills is kind of where you have to start off with that and then you move into everything else. But just uh, get the program's base founded and then in years to come it'll end up building up. So what you're saying here, Coach Brown, is that one of the things that you're looking at, especially going into this, into this holiday, this spring season, of soccer is that even though tryouts start Monday, you've got a lot of work to do. That's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, um, I do, and like I said, I don't know what my team is. So right. as far as I'm concerned, I've got a lot of work to do because I know we have some tough games. I know we play a tough conference, and then we have games against teams like Swansboro, and I know they're always good. So no matter what you do, it's 
never going to be enough. You always got to do more when you're playing teams like that. So um, we're just going to start off and build from the beginning. And I know coming, coming on Monday, what do you say? All right, we have been building. Now we're in a tough, we're in a tough conference, and then next year we're going to be stepping up to a bigger conference. What would be, how would you start your motivating uh, 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 coach's speech about let's get out there, practice, and learn everything that we need to know so we can be a contender? Well, how do you do that? I think it's um, just about effort and giving. If you go out there and play your hardest, that's what the boys did. Right. And you do that, and you can take down any team, especially if a team might be better talent-wise. They might fall a little bit thinking they're, you know, relax a little bit thinking that, they're better than you, but if you just give that effort, um, you can, anything can happen. So um, that was kind of my thing with the boys was just effort, energy, bringing that to the table. The skills will follow, and um, that's what I'm bringing to the girls too. And hopefully, the same results happen. Well, we're de definitely looking forward for that to take place. Huh? I think it was a pretty good, outstanding uh, speech as far as let's get this year started. What do you think, Kathy? Yes, and. Uh I, I know from what I've seen in this area that soccer is a very popular sport overall, and I would gather you, you probably have some good support from the community. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can go to any of the uh, local fields, and that I mean, you see game after game after game being played. And I'm I'm fairly new here, um, only my second year being in this area. But from what I've seen, soccer is a big deal here, which is great because if it's not if you don't have the support, it's very hard to get people playing whereas here these kids are playing from the time they're like four or five years old and that's a huge help uh, when you get to the high school level. So you really don't, a, a lot of the fundamentals you'll be teaching will actually be a higher level fundamentals. Most of these kids have some basic footwork and passing skills and shooting skills. Yeah that's correct so most of them come to me with those skills already which makes my job a lot easier because then I can work on um, strategies and uh, game planning and doing different types of uh, skills that are going to improve a game flow as opposed to just basic soccer skills. And we know soccer is, is quite a defensive game uh, and, and your midfielders and then uh, the, the last line of defense, your goalkeeper are very important people on the team. Absolutely. Uh, I played goalie when I was in school so I know that for a fact. Uh, you, the last thing you ever want to do is let that ball get back to the goalie. That's And I, I tell my defense that. I tell the midfielders, there's a 10 other guys out there. That goalie should never touch the ball. If they don't touch the ball, or if they don't ever get a shot on goal, I should say, um, then we don't lose. They can't score if the ball doesn't go towards that goalie. So um, that's biggest thing in soccer is letting the ball get to the goalie. How long did you play soccer? You, did you start in youth soccer? Yeah, I started, uh, I think, about four or five years old, whatever the cutoff was. I think it was about four up in Pennsylvania um, and played all the way through high school. And uh, I had a chance to play in college. I turned it down for um, more academic purposes. But, uh, yeah, so played all the way through my high school career. Did you have an opportunity in college to play in either mural or club soccer? I did play intramurals um, when I was at Penn State, so um, had that experience. I played, I think, three different seasons for that. And people who aren't familiar with it, intramurals in, at the D1 college level, that's very competitive. That's the people who probably wanted to try to make it onto the team, didn't, and they're high-level soccer players. We had a friend whose son played intramural lacrosse at Pitt, and they traveled and everything else. It was almost like a, a, a lower level of the D1 school's main team, varsity. Right, yeah, uh, Penn State was the same way. Guys, I played against the intramurals, and I played the top level of intramurals. I think there was three different levels. That top level was mostly guys that were playing on state championship teams in high school, and uh, they went kind of the route I went, more for academics or whatever. Maybe they tried out for the team, uh, varsity team, and got cut. Uh, so it was still a high level of soccer being played at intramurals, yeah. And I gather that this has been a great opportunity for you to take over a, a group of young people and, and kind of impart your love of the sport to them as well as the skills. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I went to school for um, kinesiology and I'm a PE teacher. So with that, a lot of times comes the sports and always enjoyed the sports growing up. So 
Uh, always wanted to be a coach once my playing days were over, and I think I can safely say now my playing days are over. So I'll coach, and uh, I enjoy every second of it. Not playing any pickup or club uh, here? I do my best, but <laughs> okay. we'll leave it at pickup. <laughs> we're talking um, with uh, Coach Brown. We're talking about um, when we went to break, we're talking about stamina. Even when playing a team that it may be of a higher quality, of, of, that have been in the limelight for so long. You talk about the White Oaks, you talk about the Swansboro's, and other schools here in Eastern North Carolina. Um, stamina. And a lot of that comes in the off season. I like them to come in prepared, and I tell them, you know, I kind of give them workouts and stuff that they should be doing, and I tell them be prepared when you come to tryouts. And then uh, it's a little bit different for the boys. We have a little bit more time with the summer to do that kind of stuff than the girls. But uh, then I take them to the track, and we run, and we run, and we do bleachers, and we do squats and push-ups and all that kind of stuff. And then once we get to tryouts and that, then we'll start incorporating more soccer conditioning drills where we do that. Um, because if you're not conditioned, then your skills eventually throughout an 80-minute game are going to wear off. Right, exactly. you, you might be fine for the first half, but unless you get a big lead, and sometimes a big enough lead isn't good enough if – Another team has more stamina and can uh, outlast you. So sometimes soccer, that's what it comes down to, is outlasting your opponent. And uh, so that's what I prepare them for.